we balance equations to uphold the law of conservation of mass. It's one of the fundamental principles in chemistry and in science. This can be understood with something as simple as baking a cake. So for example, the mass of your reactants has to be equal to the mass of your products. So the mass of your raw ingredients, like the batter, the eggs, the flour, the sugar, all of that, once combined, has to equal the mass of the final product, which is the chocolate cake itself. Sometimes in chemistry, the equations that are given to you are not yet balanced. So you could see for yourself in the image where it says before and it's unbalanced, how the oxygen atoms are not equal to each other on either side of that arrow. Now, on the image that says after and it's balanced, you can count for yourself. You have the same number of hydrogens on both sides of the equation and you have the same number of oxygens on both sides of the equation. So the mass of the reactants is equal to the mass of the products. I think the best way to learn balancing equations is just to do it. So we're first going to count up what's on the left hand side of the arrow and on the right hand side. So count up your hydrogens and oxygens. On the right side we have two hydrogens and two oxygens. And I'll explain to you the language of chemistry here when you're balancing equations. What you could do is you can always put coefficients in front. And I'll explain what the coefficients do in just a moment. But what you can't do is you can't just go in there and write like a little two on that oxygen and pretend that it's balanced. Okay, and so you can't do that. That is not how balancing works. Otherwise you just ended up changing the whole entire compound or molecule that you're working with. So when you put that big two in front right there that I wrote in black, that two actually distributes to everything in that formula. So it will change my hydrogen to four and my oxygen to two. So my oxygens are balanced, but I unintentionally changed my hydrogen count to four in the process of trying to balance my oxygen. So this is a quick fix because now I look to the right hand side of that arrow and I just place a 2 in front of that hydrogen because it will distribute and change that to 4. Okay, and technically there's a 1, a coefficient of 1 that's sitting in front of that O2 on the product side. So this is known as a 2, 2, 1 balance equation and the sum of the coefficients is 2 plus 2 plus 1 which is 5. So you want to write a 5 in that box. This type of equation right here is known as a decomposition where you start off with something like water, H2O, and it splits up into two different components, right? So this is known as decomposition. Sometimes people refer to it as reverse synthesis. And you'll see it in this general form where it's some compound AB, and it breaks down into A and B. So that is known as decomposition because it breaks down. Let's try this one. So Na has one on the left side. And it looks to me like chlorine has two on the left hand side, or the reactant side, as we say. And the right side is just one and one a piece for both sodium and chlorine. So it looks to me like the chlorines are mismatched. So I will go ahead and place a two there to fix the chlorine. So chlorines are now balanced, but in the process of balancing the chlorines, I unintentionally changed my sodium count on the product side. So now it's two, but this is a really easy fix because I just need to come back to the left hand side and place a two in front right there. So now my sodiums are two a piece and my chlorines are also two a piece. I'm going to clean this up a bit. Okay, so technically there is a one that's sitting there in front of the Cl2. So my sum of coefficients is two plus one plus two, giving me a five again. This type of reaction is known as a synthesis reaction. That's how it's classified because it's in the form A plus B makes a compound AB. So we have sodium plus chlorine and that makes sodium chloride, which is now an entirely different compound. So we're gonna try our first single displacement reaction. And this one actually has a polyatomic in it, which might throw some people off, but actually it's not that bad. So we'll just start counting. Okay, so on the left we have one aluminum, one lead, and we have two sets of nitrate. Now, technically it's like this, it's N2O6 because it does distribute, but do not think of it like that. I think that just makes it much harder. So think of your polyatomics like its own thing, like its own unit. Okay, so think of them in terms of sets and don't distribute that subscript. 
Okay, so likewise, again, on this side, we actually have three sets of nitrate, and the aluminums and leads look uh, like they're at one. So we're fine there. We gotta find a way to balance the polyatomics first. So my lowest common factor, or least common multiple, is gonna be six. Okay, between two and three, the lowest common multiple is gonna be six. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a three here, and a two on this side, okay, to force a six to come out. This is called forcing. So to make progress in the problem, I just have to start somewhere and balance the polyatomics first because the polyatomics are considered to be the most difficult to balance. So even though it changes your lead on the reactant side to three and it will change your aluminum to two on the right hand side, that's okay because the monatomics are actually really easy to balance. So then we just come back here, put a two in front of that AL so aluminums look fine now, they're balanced. Come back to the product side, put a three in front, and now our leads are balanced. So on both sides of the equation, we have equal numbers of aluminum, lead, and nitrate. Okay, and nitrate again is NO3, so it's got nitrogen and oxygen. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this up right here so you can see the coefficients nice and neat again. We've got a two, three, two and a three, okay, making a sum of 10 for the sum of coefficients. Okay, let's go ahead, count up our iron and our oxygen on the reactant side, so it's one and two, the piece. And on the right-hand side of the arrow, we've got two and three, respectively, for iron and oxygen. So now let's examine this problem a little bit. Let's see, so it looks to me like we're gonna have to force a six to come out, so, to force a six, that means I have to first place a three and a two. Okay, so I know that my oxygens are taken care of, but when I place that two in front of the Fe2O3, that actually changes my iron count to four unintentionally. But again, I just come back to the left-hand side of the arrow and I just put a four in front and now I'm good. So the sum of coefficients here would be four plus three plus two and that should give me a nine, okay, for the sum of coefficients. Okay, I'll probably stop soon and call this part one, but before I go, let me just point out why we're doing the sum of coefficients, because in my class, okay, when I make keys for quizzes or some of these balancing equation assignments, I can just line up my key next to your work in the boxes and I could just see the sum of coefficients. So I'm looking at this example right here and I just go straight down the line. I see a four, a three, a seven, and a nine. And I know that this person is doing this work correctly because the only way to balance these equations correctly is if you have that same number or that same set of coefficients. Okay, and just keep in mind, like in problem number two there, the sum of coefficients is actually three, even though there's no coefficients in front of any of those elements or those formulas, like MgO plus H2O yields MgOH2, magnesium hydroxide. So if there are no coefficients in front, it's always implied to be a one. So that's why the sum there is three. And later on in part two, you know, I'll go into more details about the five types of reactions, but we covered a few already. So the five types are synthesis, there's combustion, which has its own part in the series. We have decomposition, single displacement. Sometimes it's called single replacement. And then we also have double displacement or double replacement reaction. So you'll see that in the next part of the video.